Here we have uh, another example to demonstrate the procedure to obtain uh, mathematical models for mechanical systems where we have both linear displacement as well as angular displacement. This mechanical system consists of a mass. To this mass, uh, an external force F of T is applied. This force uh, produces a linear displacement in this mass. There is a disc which can uh, rotate about its pivot and the force of friction between this mass m and this disc that causes this disc to rotate let's assume the direction of rotation in this disc that is theta of t uh, we want to obtain a transfer function between the angular displacement of this, this uh, disc and the force applied on this mass uh, the procedure to obtain uh, the mathematical model for this mechanical system is uh, simple uh, for uh, linear displacements, we shall write uh, the force balance equations and for angular displacements, we shall write torque balance equation. Here we have uh, one assumption. The assumption is that the uh, linear displacement in this mass is such that this mass always remains in contact with uh, this uh, disc. So let's uh, first draw the free body diagram for this mass that is shown over here. Uh, we have mass to this mass an external force uh, f of t is applied this force written in laplace domain is shown over here uh, what are other forces which are acting on this mass there is a uh, force due to inertia of this mass that force is always opposite to the direction of acceleration and uh, that is shown over here uh, here x of t is uh, the linear displacement of this mass and the second derivative of this displacement is acceleration there is also a force uh, due to this uh, spring what is direction of that force if this mass uh, moves towards right this spring will oppose the direction of displacement that is the force exerted by the spring will be towards left and the magnitude of the force that is exerted by spring is proportional to net elongation in this spring that force is shown over here uh, k into x of s and that force is towards left there is also a force due to a friction and a friction also opposes uh, the direction of displacement uh, if this mass moves towards uh, right the force direction of the force due to this friction will be towards left and the magnitude of the force will be proportional to linear velocity in this mass so that force is shown over here fv uh, s uh, x of s there is also a force due to uh, this friction friction between uh, this uh, disc and this mass however over here this disc is moving as well as this mass is uh, moving so to determine the uh, force due to this friction between the two moving surfaces we apply superposition that is initially we assume this disc to be stationary move this mass in the direction of x of t and determine the force exerted by this friction on this mass and in the second step we assume this mass to be stationary and uh, rotate this disc in the assumed direction and determine the force exerted by this friction on this mass so if this disc is stationary and this mass is moving towards right what will be the direction of force exerted by this friction on this mass that friction will oppose the direction of displacement in this mass that is the force exerted by this friction on this mass will be towards left and the magnitude of the force will be proportional to the linear velocity of this mass and that force is shown over here next if we keep this mass to be stationary move this disc uh, in the assumed direction then what will be the force exerted by this friction on this mass if this disc is rotated in counterclockwise direction this force will tend to move this mass towards right that is the direction of the force uh, exerted by this friction on this mass uh, that will be towards right and the magnitude of this force will be proportional to 
the linear displacement of this disk. So that force is uh, shown over here. Uh, R into theta of uh, S, that is the linear displacement of this disk. And uh, then uh, this multiplied by S, that is linear velocity of this disk. Uh, and uh, then that multiplied by the uh, this uh, uh, friction coefficient. So now we have a free body diagram for the linear displacement. Uh, we can easily obtain the uh, force balance equation, the sum of forces acting towards right, that is equal to sum of forces acting towards left. And that is written over here. Uh, the forces acting towards left, uh, this uh, force brought to the left hand side, then there is a negative sign. Similarly, we draw the free body diagram for this rotating disk uh, that is shown over here. Uh, the assumed direction of rotation in this uh, disk that is in counterclockwise direction. What are torques acting on this disk? There is a torque due to movement of inertia of this disk. The direction of that torque will be opposite to the direction of displacement and magnitude of that torque will be proportional to the angular acceleration in this disk. That torque is shown over here. S squared into theta of S that is the angular acceleration of this disk and J is the moment of inertia of this disk. What are other torques? There are uh, torques due to uh, this frictional force and again since uh, this uh, disk is rotating as well as this mass is uh, moving and uh, therefore to determine the torque due to this force uh, we shall apply the superposition that is keep this mass stationary move the disk in the assumed direction and determine the torque applied by this frictional force and in the second step keep this disk stationary move it in the assumed direction and determine the torque applied by this frictional force on this disk so if this mass is kept stationary and this uh, disk is rotated in the assumed direction uh, then what will be the direction of torque due to this frictional force the torque due to this frictional force will oppose the direction of displacement. This friction will oppose the uh, angular displacement in this disk. That is the uh, torque due to this friction uh, that will be in uh, clockwise direction uh, opposite to the direction of displacement. Direction of that torque is shown over here. What is magnitude of that torque? Magnitude of this torque is the frictional force multiplied by this radius of the disk. Uh, the torque due to frictional force, that is force due to friction, multiplied by the radius of disk. What is frictional force? Frictional force is proportional to the uh, linear displacement in this disk. That is, uh, the linear displacement in the disk is R multiplied by theta of S and uh, then uh, S multiplied by this thing is the linear velocity of this disk and then uh, Fv is the friction coefficient. So this is force due to friction and R multiplied by this force that is the torque. In the second step uh, we keep uh, this disk uh, stationary, move this mass in the assumed direction. So if you do that what will be the torque, direction of the torque applied by this frictional force on this disk. So if this mass is moved towards right, it will tend to rotate this disk in uh, this counterclockwise direction. That is the uh, direction of the torque due to this uh, frictional force that will be in counterclockwise direction. So that is shown over here. What is magnitude of this force? Magnitude of this force is again uh, proportional to uh, the linear velocity of this mass and uh, that is the torque is equal to this uh, radius of this disk multiplied by frictional force. Frictional force is proportional to linear velocity of this mass. Linear velocity is S multiplied by X of S uh, and Fv is friction coefficient and therefore the torque due to this friction uh, that is R multiplied by this force which is written over here.
so now we have the free body diagram and for this free body diagram we can write the torque balance equation which is uh, written over here sum of the torques which are in clockwise direction that is equal to sum of torques in counterclockwise direction so this term is brought to the left hand side and therefore a negative sign since we are interested in obtaining a transfer function between the angular displacement uh, of this disk and the applied force therefore we would like to eliminate x of s from this expression so we can use uh, the, the second equation for that purpose and uh, this uh, second equation uh, gives us this relation by bringing this term to the right hand side and then simply rearranging the terms so now if we substitute this x of s uh, over here into this equation over here uh, then we uh, have uh, this equation and uh, then uh, we can simply rearrange the terms to get the final transfer function between uh, the angular displacement theta and the applied force f of s that uh, uh, transfer function is given over here 